those big ones at the front are the ones they're gonna use for suffocation bites on the big things and breaking the neck and little things like people. Oh, good buddy Dave Salmoni. Okay, so look, he spends a lot of time with big animals. You know, the kinds that can kill you, but he doesn't run some kind of circus act. No, nope. Dave is in this for passion and respect for the animals, and he also knows when to give them some space. You guys get ready to back out of here. Faster, John. You just walk faster. So how did Mr. Salmoni get to live a dream job? Well, about 10 years ago, he got a biology degree from Laurentian University, and in his fourth year, he did a project for the federal government researching black bears. Next up, he got a job at the Bowenville Zoo in Ontario, and he worked with the zoo's founder, a legendary animal trainer by the name of Michael Hackenberger. Six months later, Dave became the head trainer, and he specialized in everything from big cats to Arctic wolves. Then, in January of the year 2000, he got a life-changing offer. Take two of the zoo's young Bengal tigers to Africa and introduce them to the wild. The goal was to show Asia how to conserve their big cats. Dave spent four years with the Tigres and became the star of a documentary called Living with Tigers. Next thing you know, the man's on television because he's good looking and he's charming. He traveled the world, hosted shows on everything from sharks to bears. Basically, if it's big and it bites, Dave has done a show on it. Now, these days, he's running his own production company and hosts a bunch of shows on Animal Planet and Discovery Channel, perhaps you've seen after the attack. And of course, Rogue Nature. Even though he was aggressive with other bears, I guess it didn't mean he was going to be aggressive with me. He kind of gave me a glance and carried on. Thank goodness I paid attention. <laughs> Everybody, please say hello to Dave Salmoni. Good boy. All right. Come on. Oh, that's Dave scary. And Jonas. Jonas. Jonas the tiger. Good boy. Hey, Jonas is a little nervous when you check him out. Give him a call. <laughs> Come over here, Jonas. Come over here, baby. That's good work, George. George all that uh, <laughs> chuffing you remember from Robbie. Oh, yeah. From Robbie the tiger. Hi, Jonas. Oh, guy. Jonas, want to fight? Oh, it's not oh. so scary. It's not oh. so scary. It's not so scary. <laughs> Jonas. Jonas, Jonas, Jonas. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> okay. Oh, now that wasn't so hard. Oh, Jonas. Hey, baby. How are you, buddy? Good. Nice, nice to see you again, man. All right, so last time you brought Robbie, which is a tiger that you got from a stripper. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, it's true. He was confiscated as a rescue and went to Bowmanville Zoo. And That's right. Hey, now has a happy, healthy life. Nice. And this is Jonas. Now, you know what Jonas is doing? Jonas is waiting here so when no one's paying attention, he can take a piece of my leg, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Your, your heel would be perfect for his teeth. Nice. Cool. And so uh, well, tell me a bit about uh, Jonas. Jonas is about seven months old, and he's, uh, you know training to do this kind of stuff. He's a captive braid. This is what they call leash training stuff. So this is all the learning stuff. All this, all the people, all the cameras hanging out with new guys like you. See what's going on. Yeah, that's him getting trained and getting used to people. So what that does is allows him to live the rest of his life, if trained right, mm -hmm. to go for walks. Doesn't have to live in that cage anymore. He can go and you can excite his brain by showing him new things. And maybe, maybe get a job, carry his own weight or something. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you'll see him do this kind of stuff, feature maybe. film kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. You know, the educational side of things, especially for Tigers, that's is a, so important. That's a big part of you. You know, I, I actually, I do watch your shows, and, and I've, I've, I remember when I was a young kid, I used to always watch Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom mm. and all those kinds of shows, because um, that's how I got to see nature. Now, in the last six months, <laughs> you, you've been extremely busy, right? Very busy. <laughs> and you were living right in the places that we used to watch on TV. Yeah, I mean, I was living six months by myself in a tent in the middle. You want to go sit down with Can me? I pet him right here? Yeah, you sit him wherever you hey, want. Hey, you can sit right beside me if you want. Hey, come on. Okay, yes. I was sit. living six months alone uh -huh. in a tented camp yep. in the middle of Africa. And the point of it was uh, there was some problem lions that yep. had been given the last chance. They, were, they found a new home where they could be wild if they would allow ecotourism, pictures right. and people to come on safari to see them. Right. But they were, they were attacking, they were, they were charging, they were going after people and the, and the owner was like, I got nothing here. So yeah. either you come help me save these guys or, or forget it. So I went there, started living with them and uh, basically tried to teach them that they can trust people again. But they were aggressive lions. They were the most aggressive lions I've ever seen. I, I've met a lot of aggressive lions, but these uh -huh. things, you know, they brought me probably to the closest uh, point of getting absolutely killed. Yeah, not really? really like, I mean, it was, it, I mean, it, not a joke, not, not even, yeah. I'm not really into the whole glorification of the danger side of it, yeah. but it was, yeah, some it's of the awesome stuff TV, that, that, that so went on. Yeah. Tell us the better. <laughs> and it was all on camera, you know, Animal Planet is going to be showing that uh, very shortly. What do you do when, like, I mean, tell me what an aggressive, uh, like an experience you would have had down there with an aggressive lion. Well, you saw with the lion, the lion uh, in the, the pre-clip, when he was coming at me, that was Brutus. He's the dominant male. He's not scared of me. Uh -huh. And so you see, you know, I'd stand up, I'd show him dominance. I'd, hey, no. I always had that big crook. Yeah. I start yelling at him, you know, waving my stick. And what that does, it makes me look real big, and it's like a big bluff. Like, hey, mm -hmm. if you come, I'm big and scary. Come here, buddy. Come over here. Come here. 
Come here, Jonas. My name is Jonas. And then you'll, uh, <laughs> obviously there's other things. I can show you even with Jonas. Okay, Jonas, yeah. come here. Now, if Jonas decides he wants to bite me, I gotta lie down with him. So now I look like a toy. So yep. why, don't, why don't you lie down? Why don't you lie down here? <laughs> You know how much your shirt so costs? I'll take this, and he'll get on top <laughs> of you. Right. Come here, Jonas. Come here, Jonas, Jonas come have here. a look. Jonas, come so here. So since you're a toy, right. he's gonna get on top of you. Now, first thing I'm gonna do, yep. I'm gonna watch his teeth. Yep. Gonna, that's yeah, I'm watching his teeth you. too, buddy. So he's got you. Oh. He, these claws yep. would be digging into you now. Really? Oh, he's so cute. Okay, hey. so he's, oh. he's still a bit nervous to actually sink his teeth he in He should you. be, man, you know what I'm like? <laughs> I'm a beast. <laughs> See, now he's getting his, his, his confidence back up. He's checking things out. But yeah, you're, you're going to watch his teeth. You're going to put your fingers in his jaw to, to block the bite. And Because yeah, uh, they're smarter than humans, right? Humans, we, we bite our own lip all the time. They don't do that. <laughs> they, he won't. I mean, I've never seen a cat bite through their own lip. I don't think they can. Mm -hmm. And this size, all the way to the top, you get that finger in their cheek. You can got some time. No, tell me about after the attack. The idea of, I mean, because a lot of people are afraid of animals. And, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that when they were a kid, something happened to them. Yep. Or something happened to one of their kids, but you, your job is to bring people to a place of real terror for themselves. Yeah, you know, After the Attack is one of those shows that I really got into the concept of is making people fall back in love. It's very rare to get attacked by an animal, but I want you to fall back in love with that animal. So, for example, let's say it was this tiger, that mm -hmm. you got attacked by a tiger in India. Right. I'd bring you, Jonas, and say, look, they're not all like that. You know, let's go back, let's figure out what happened to you, but also let's get some interaction in there. Let's show you that... A nice cat can, can be like this, can be tons of fun. Well, but, and, but I suppose a big part of that, and I, and I know this is kind of an, an odd position for you to be in, because it's good to show people and educate them about, about animals, but the other part of the, the coin is like, like, yes, tigers can be great, just stay away from them. Yeah, I mean, you know, th th I don't think they should stay away, but yeah, it, they're dangerous. Yeah. I mean, they're cute. Look at this guy. He's the cutest you thing you're ever going to see. Who are you going to hurt? <laughs> Who are you going to hurt except for everybody? But that said, I mean, if you, if you had one of these in your backyard, yeah. he's going to be 500 pounds just like Robbie was. Mm -hmm. And you make one mistake. Even you make one mistake with him, he can kill you. Yeah, so this tiger can kill, right? At, at, this, at this size, if I'm not here and he was a worse tempered animal, <laughs> he, he could kill you easily. easily. Now, one of the things that we, we had talked about and I would have... Uh, you know, and you and I have talked about You're going to wear him as a coat? I'm going to wear him as a coat. Um, I don't want to skin him. I want to actually, can I wear him? Yeah, we'll see. Oh, no. We'll see. I'll pick him up, and if he, if he likes it, he's cool. If he's not, then we won't. YouTube, here we come. <laughs> oh, he's not cool with that. He's not cool with that, is he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> so you win. Like that? I can't lift this thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so he's right. a little nervous. He's a little nervous. We can put him down. Well, you can be a coat later. Here, All right, I'll wait. Okay, here. Here. On daddy's lap. Oh, no, he's like, oh, so boy. So I'm going to stand beside you just to watch oh, his teeth and stuff. Boy, but you're big. Oh, he you're doesn't big. want to be up there either. You know, <laughs> prop, story of my life, bud. <laughs> story of my life. Um, we, we had actually talked about bringing chimpanzees on, right? Because, because yep. we love having chimps, but uh, you and I have talked about this and that th th there are a lot of problems. It's emotional. There's, there's, a, there's a real stress that's on a chimpanzee, right? Come on, you know, here, buddy. The, the problem with chimpanzees is ob obviously the fact that uh, they are so human and there are, you know, they're so smart. So... When, when, you, when you do some of the captive things, I think it's more um, the perception. Mm -hmm. You can treat a chimp well, and you could do this kind of stuff, but... Um, when you're working with Jane Goodall, right? Yeah, and Jane is dead set against having any trained animals. And because the Animal Plant's relationship with them, yep. you know, I just, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a chimp guy, and if Jane yeah. says that's the way it is, she's the expert. Okay. I'm a big fan of trusting the experts. You As know? you should, yeah. Yeah, you know, and in your case, you know, I'll bring you a tiger, I'll bring you a wolf. If you yeah. listen to me, you'll have a good experience. If yeah. you don't, you're probably gonna run into some trouble. No kidding, man. <laughs> do you ever, late at night, just want to take one of these things home? I do. I love it. Like Jonas goes home with all. He's got five or six different trainers, and they all bring him home. And that's what he's doing right now. At this age, he's getting used to people. That's you know? incredible. And that what that does, it makes him less dangerous. You know, and makes him more calm around people. And that means he can have a better life because he's gonna be a captive guy. For sure. He doesn't have the opportunity to be wild. When you spent that time. You know, the last six months trying to, you know, get a wild pride alliance to, to, to come together. Did you have moments where you thought, I gotta quit, I can't do this? More than any project I've ever been. I've, 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 I think I've done a lot of the things I've done because of my ego. Yeah. And, and it's, I guess I'm old enough now to recognize that. And I can remember at times saying, you know, I think I've just bit off too much. You yeah. know, I have all this, this big project behind it, this television behind it, I have my, my ego behind it. But there was times I was like, this is just too dangerous. This is not worth my life. Wow, it's great to have you on. And I'm not going to let you go yet. We're going to take a break, and uh, we're going <laughs> to let Jonas go play video games or something. Yeah. Because then we're bringing out wolves, right? Great. Amazing. More with Dave Salmoni. Wolves. Next. Come here, Jonas. Come here.